obviously the canopies of the world and those companies have a ton of, on their plate as well and they still are the largest companies, uh, cannabis companies in the world. I expect them to continue to execute internationally as well as giving more color on what they're actually selling uh, into the Canadian recreational markets. But there's another 20 or 30 sub markets within the U.S. that's very, very difficult uh, to, to follow and it's kind of what, what takes up a lot of my time now. And uh, there's probably five, six or seven companies that have come to market on the U.S. side that are all clamoring for positions in markets like Florida and New York and mm -hmm. Pennsylvania and Ohio. Uh, and I think those are the stories that are that are going to get a lot of traction this year. I think the relative valuations of many of these uh, U.S. cannabis operators that are listed in Canada uh, are a lot more compelling. And I think you're going to see a lot of very impressive revenue and EBITDA run rates sooner with these U.S. names compared to the Canadian licensed producers. Hmm.